Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Ken Ingold. I'm one of the pastors here at the church at RB. We call this series A Better Story. We call it A Better Story because each one of us has a story. It's a story that typically defines us. Um, it, it helps us how we relate to people and how they relate to us. But fortunately, Jesus came to give us a better story. It's a story that properly identifies us as a child of the Most High God. It gives us purpose, a purpose to honor God, to glorify his name, and to be a blessing to those around us. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. You can follow along here. You can read it on your Bible. Or you can read it on the, the, on the CRB app. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why? Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not, I am not being unfair to you. I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Now, if you're a churchgoer, especially if you're a Christ follower, and you read this parable, you typically, we typically fall into one of three camps. The first camp, which I'll define, I'm going to call this in the resentful camp. Yeah, the resentful camp. Uh, this, in the earthly paradigm, this was those people, they were standing back watching as those people were hired at noon and at three o'clock, especially those who were hired at five who were probably not honorable in the first place. And yet when they got, at the end of the day, they got paid a full day's wage. And they're looking at that saying, they don't deserve that. That's not right. It shouldn't be happening that way. Something wrong with this picture. And they have a sense of bitterness and resentment over what has taken place. On the spiritual side, in the kingdom of God paradigm, this would be those who accepted Jesus Christ at some point much later in life. And maybe they were dishonoring to God all the way throughout their life. And people look at that and say, I'm, that doesn't look right. I mean, that grace shouldn't be offered to them. That's not right, that's not fair, there's something inequitable about that. They are not deserving of that grace. They, they, they did not live a life that was honoring to God and they shouldn't be able to make that decision that late in life. It's a tough thing. You're having this sense of bitterness and resentment toward them. <laughs> that's God's amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, it saved a wretch like you and saved a wretch even like the person you're not sure you want to see in heaven. The second camp, I'm going to call this one the entitled camp. This one pertains in the earthly paradigm to those who went to work very early in the morning. And they looked at those hired in the, later in the day and they said, oh, that's awesome. They got paid a full day's wage. I'm happy for them. That's so great. But as long as I get more, I just expect to be compensated more because I worked the entire day. I, I, I should be paid more than what they were paid. On the spiritual side, kingdom of God paradigm. Yeah, this refers to those who have known Jesus since they were a child. They've walked with him faithfully. They've sought to serve him the very best way that they can. And now they, they see others coming to Christ um, later in life. And they're like, I'm happy for them. I'm thrilled that they've come to know Christ. Just some way, somehow, I expect to be rewarded more for my faithfulness 
And I can just imagine walking into heaven and Jesus wrapping his arms around me and saying, welcome home, my child. And, and I say, thank you, Jesus. Um, but by the way, man, I have, I have served you my entire life. I've been faithful to you. What's my reward? What's in it for me? And I realize there sounds like a whole lot of pride. Flies in the face of who God is. Flies in the face of what God is about. But maybe you find yourself in one of those two camps. Maybe you're in the resentful camp, or maybe you're in the entitled camp. Maybe that's your story. But there's a third camp. It's the camp I'm going to call the gracious camp. And those in the gracious camp, they, they read this parable, and they discover, they accept, they embrace three truths from this parable. First is this. God's kingdom is different from the kingdom of this world. Yeah, God's kingdom is different than the kingdom of this world. It's an upside down paradigm. God has flipped everything upside down and we need to be careful. In fact, we must avoid attaching earthly paradigms to God's kingdom. The second truth that those in the gracious camp embrace and accept when they read this parable, God calls us unto himself, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. God loves us with an everlasting love. And he loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay the, for, pay the penalty for our sins so we could have new life in him. God does this because of who he is, how, because of how mad, great and majestic he is, how much he loves us, not because of who we are. And the third truth that those in the gracious camp accept, embrace, is this. God rewards us not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done for us. Yeah, our God's a generous God. He's going to reward us. He promises that in Scripture, but it's not based on what we've done. It's because of the price that Jesus paid for us. We are to live out of a heart of gratitude for what Jesus did for us, not looking at it, okay, because I did this, because I did that, I have certain merits and achievements you're gonna reward me for. No, it's because of what Jesus did for us. So which camp are you in? Are you in the resentful camp? That you just has a sense of bitterness and resentment or those that don't deserve God's grace because of the way they lived their life and the moment where they decided all of a sudden I wanna receive Jesus and go to heaven? Or maybe you're in the entitled camp and you're happy for those who receive Christ as long as you get a greater reward when you get to heaven. Or are you in the gracious camp, living out of a heart of gratitude for what Jesus has done for us? This is my prayer for me, for you, for all of us. That we will get excited when someone comes to know Jesus Christ, regardless of what point in life they make that decision, and regardless and even despite the life they lived prior to that, we will be excited when they come to know Christ, when they reach out by faith and put their trust in him. And then we will live life to the fullest for him. Because our God can be trusted. He's proven himself faithful over and over and over again. He will continue to prove himself faithful both now and forever. Why? Because he's simply that kind of God. Will you pray with me? Father, we do thank you. You loved us so much, you sent your own son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to pay the penalty for our sin, and was resurrected from the grave so that we could have new life in him. We have that, we're coming up where we get to celebrate that at Good Friday and on Easter Sunday morning. Thank you for that, Lord. Father, help us to live in this gracious camp to embrace that and to be happy for those who come to know you at whatever point in life and to not go into heaven, not even to go into the rest of this life with any expectations of how you're going to reward us, but just to trust you because you are a generous, generous God. We praise you for that in the powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope to see you online for Good Friday and either online or one of our three services in the park on Easter. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.